This is Palm Sunday. This is not going to be a traditional Palm Sunday message, however. Uh, you've gotten the Palm Sunday part already in the earlier part of this, and now we're going to kind of move forward, move past the next few days and the things that took place, and, and move towards Thursday and Thursday evening as Jesus is meeting for the last time with his disciples. As the Passover feast was about to take place, and I'd like to ask you to turn with me to John chapter 13, verses 1 through 17. John chapter 13. Grab your Bible, grab the Bible that's in the pew in front of you, hopefully. Do something, but get a Bible in your hand and get, turn to John chapter 13 as we read verses 1 through 17. It was just before the Passover feast. Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he now showed them the full extent of his love. The evening meal was being served, and the devil had already prompted Judas Iscariot, son of Simon, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, You do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord Simon Peter uh, replied, Not just my feet, but my hands and head as well. That's, that's Peter. It's all or nothing. He says, Whoo! All the way or nothing. Jesus answered, a person who has had a bath needs only to wash his feet. His whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him, and that was why he said not every one was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to this, his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? That's the phrase we're going to be really looking at here today. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. I tell you the truth, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed. If you do them, shall we pray? I do only, Father, as we look at this concluding day prior to your death and the messages you were trying to get across to your disciples, there were messages for us as well. And so, Lord, I just ask that you would open our hearts and minds today to hear from you, to help us to understand what you have done for us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The implications of this text are huge and really require a response from us. We shouldn't just be able to read it and say, oh, that's nice. It should require some sort of a response from us inside of our hearts and lives. Either we reject God who would kneel down and wash someone else's feet like a servant, or we need to embrace this God and serve him faithfully. We can't read this passage and fully grasp all the implications of it without being changed in some way. When Jesus asked the question, do you understand what I have done for you? It's obvious the disciples don't have a clue. Now that should not be a surprise to us. The disciples didn't have a clue a lot of the time. And so once again, he's asking them, do you understand what I've done for you? Lots of times he had to explain the things that he was teaching to the people. They'd ask him later, hey, Jesus, what did you mean by that? You know, and he'd explain it to them and so forth. They were really kind of dense. Kind of reminds 
us of them, maybe, and us, them and us, you know. We don't always really grasp everything as well as we should either. But Jesus was using this moment, knowing they didn't have a clue, he was using this as a teaching moment. He asked the question so that he could provide the answer to them. And he's asking us the exact same question and for the same reason. We have an opportunity to embrace the same lifestyle Jesus embraced. We've been talking about that for weeks now. What Jesus' life was like. What was his lifestyle like? The revolutionary aspects of his life. And we have the opportunity to embrace that same radical, revolutionary lifestyle if we're willing to do that. And through his actions of washing the disciples' feet, he challenges us to participate in the lifestyle of humility that he also had practiced over and over and over again. The practice of humility, the lifestyle of humility. Now, humility is nothing more than giving ourselves in service to others, thinking of others more highly than ourselves, being willing to set aside our selfishness and what we want to do in service of others. That's what humility really is all about. And we can embrace this lifestyle no matter what we do, or who we are, or where we live. There's no restrictions to that. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what your uh, station in life is. It doesn't matter what position in life you have. It doesn't matter where you live, whether you're affluent or whether you're poor, whether you live in the United States or anywhere else. It doesn't matter. You can always express this lifestyle of humility by serving others. No matter where we are, we can take up a towel and a basin, figuratively, and serve others in love just like Jesus did. We can do that. None of us can can truly say, I couldn't do that. I can't do that. We can. Every one of us can do that. Right up to the end, the disciples understood so little, little. They were so dense, and yet Jesus was very patient with them, just like he's patient with us as well. He looks, uh, he loves us, rather, with an infinite love that we can't ever begin to comprehend or imagine. An infinite love. An unconditional love. A love that never fails. And after Jesus' ascension, after he goes back up to, to God, to his place in glory where he had come from, This teaching moment helped the disciples to understand that a big part of their lives was to humbly serve others. This was one of his last acts that he did with the disciples. And it was to make a point. And in the book of Acts, we see them responding to people's needs in the same way Jesus responded. If you read the beginning of the book of Acts, you'll see the disciples healing and loving and preaching and teaching the people boldly things they had never done before not at least as boldly as they were now they're doing all of these things that jesus had left them to do and they finally got it and they finally were doing it and i can't help but believe that it was jesus's washing of their feet that influenced their attitudes and their actions they got it finally they got it They finally embraced the lifestyle Jesus had shown to them. Now, I want to offer a few possible answers to Jesus' question. Do you understand what I have done for you? First, I think Jesus is saying, I've given you a picture of what authentic Christianity looks like. This is a picture, an image. I want you to keep in your mind that this is what authentic Christianity looks like. It's a picture of a life lived in humble service to others. Jesus clearly understands who he was and what his mission was and what his purpose was. Verse 3 says, Jesus knew that he had come from God and was returning to God. He understood the events that were about to take place with his death and his resurrection. He knew they were coming. He had known they were coming. And he had even explained that to 
to his disciples. Not that they got it 